What up, Dunchbags? What's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and welcome to my review of the third studio album from Gareth Emery. This one's called A Hundred Reasons to Live. Now, Gareth Emery kind of grew into the progressive house trance kind of scene, whereas artists like Armin Van Buren and Dash Berlin tended to grow because it had more of a crossover appeal to a lot of fans and to, to the mainstream entirely. Now this was especially evident with Gareth's sophomore album Drive, which I actually liked quite a bit. That one was his first album in four years following his debut Northern Lights, and this one came only two years following Drive, which seems like an eternity now. Now that album was primarily Progressive House, in fact, I think every single track on the album was listed as Progressive House. I liked a few tracks on that album, um, but overall the fact that it became such a monotonous piece of Progressive House and kind of that mainstream big room, I guess, progressive style, it got extremely old having to hear that and hear it over and over again. Um, with very little trans elements and little experimentation on Gareth's part. Now this album, when I first listened to the previews, I was actually pretty disappointed, honestly, because while I was expecting something a little closer to Drive, we ended up getting something a little bit more trancy, um, which I ended up respecting a lot more when I finally got the chance to stream the album. Now the first single off this, Hands, I still am not absolutely crazy about, still trying to go for that standard Gareth Emery progressive house sound, um, but honestly I think that's the only way he's going to get a hit single out of this, and although I don't think he should have tried to do that, um, I do understand why he had to. I think this album, for the most part, is a lot better than Drive just because of the amount of experimentation used on this. Especially on the intro, the story so far, we're getting a bit of that hard trance sound that Gareth used to go for, which was really fun to see once again after such a straight progressive house album. There are a few interesting things about this, like the fact that it's heavily, heavily piano based, and I am even hearing some Avicii inspiration on a couple of these tracks. And like I said, where Drive was primarily centered around progressive house bangers, this thing's a lot more low-key and centered toward Gareth's classic sound, which I really enjoyed. In fact, this kind of sound is the kind of thing that I was hoping for when Armin Van Buren announced a new album, and what we ended up getting was main stage almost garbage. Uh, this thing, on the other hand, is both experimental and centered toward a classic trance sound, all while still appealing to a modern progressive house sound, and blending in some other styles as well, which is really enjoyable. I also think the melodies on this one were top-notch, although they're not necessarily as catchy as the ones on Drive, which was meant to be kind of a more mainstream appealing album. It makes it even better just because of the different types of styles that are used throughout this. It doesn't seem monotonous um, like Drive did. Now it's not, I'm not meaning to say there isn't any big progressive house bangers that were Drive-esque, like the track Reckless. Um, these are, these styles are still very evident, but not as evident as the straight progressive house drive. On tracks like We Were Young, we get a little bit of this kind of style Cash Cash used toward the beginning of their career. And by beginning, I mean their EDM career, not their commercial pop career. I don't really think there's a lot going on toward the center of this album. There's a few times when he tries to stretch into some more uh, probably main stage type of sounding things, and I really don't think that worked for this kind of center of the album. But uh, the beginning is very strong, and he does close very strong as well, which makes it an extremely enjoyable album. Christina Novelli also makes her first appearance with Gareth Emery following her car accident uh, in mid-2015. It's nice to still see her doing her thing. Uh, didn't love the track in general, though. I did really like her vocal appearance in this, though, even preferring it to a lot of tracks that she's done. Not quite as much to to Dynamite with Gareth Emery on the last album. That was one of my favorites on the record, so can't say I love it more than that. Ben Gold makes another appearance on this album like he did with Javelin on the Drive album. Then following that track, we get into a couple of my favorites on the album, which one is I Could Be Stronger But Only For You, which is a bit centered more toward a folk sound, which I really caught me off guard on this album. Kind of leading into this more slow-tempoed dance song, um, also with a piano break that I really liked in this one. And one thing I do have to praise about this album is its piano breaks, like I said at the beginning of this review. Some of the best piano breaks I've heard him do in his career are found on this album, and I really enjoyed those. There's some awesome melodies. 
and um, production on this thing. I Could Be Stronger ends up being probably one of the best tracks on the album just because it's so unique compared to everything else, but still kind of centering toward that more piano-oriented sound that he seemed to be going for with this thing. Now the closer, Sansa, is eight minutes long, and that's going to be a big influence on what I think about it as a closer because some tracks can really do that well. Dead Mouse did it extremely well with Strobe. Eric Prids did it very well with the track Opus that closed for his album. And when you make a progressive house track go out to this long, it's gotta be extremely fantastic in my opinion to be a worthy eight minutes it is. Honestly, I'm not thinking this one's that fantastic. I think it could have been cut down quite a bit and made into even more of a radio friendly kind of sounding track. This could have easily been maybe somewhere around four minutes long and gotten the point across just as well, um, which makes it disappointing that the track is so long. I'm not judging things based on time, but I'm just saying if you're going to fill up that amount of space, do it well like Eric Pritz did with the track Opus, which was one of my favorites on his record. Like I said, overall, I think this thing is a lot better than Drive just because of the amount of diversity that's in this. And I think um, overall, I do enjoy the combination of the sounds and melodies that are used in this thing. And there wasn't really much I disliked about this other than a couple little tracks in the middle. I think overall, Gareth is showing us that he can make a standalone album kind of not really doing too many features on terms of production other than with Ben Gold featuring vocalists all over the place but you kind of have to expect that with the trance scene and overall this makes for one of the best trance house crossovers I've heard in the last couple years and like I said this is the kind of sound that I was hoping to hear with Armin Van Buren's album and didn't quite get so overall yeah this thing is really good but there are some parts that are missing from it and I think this could have been a lot better uh, had he taken some time to cut back certain things, cut out certain things, have complete freedom with this and not have to center anything, especially singles like Hands, uh, toward a more radio-friendly sound because I think honestly that ruins the sound and the point that he's trying to get across. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a 6.5 which isn't bad. I really like this thing. Anyway, I have it linked in the description if you want to listen to it. If you already have listened to it, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.